niggas talking shit, yeah, they bread stank. Walk up in the club, dripping like I'm fresh paint. I can see through the facade like an. What's going on, fight fans? Welcome back to Mad Maddie Fight Talk. Your host here, Mad Maddie, once again with Crazy Chris. We're going to get right into it. UFC 275 is right around the corner. That's going to be Saturday, June 11th at the Singapore Indoor Stadium, where we're going to have the light heavyweight title on the line between Glover Teixeira and Yuri Prohashka. I'm not going to lie to you guys, man. This fight card, I don't really want to pay 80 bucks for it. I'm obviously going to pay the 80 bucks, but it's basically as good as, you know, a UFC fight night. I'm not trying to unhype the fights, but realistically, besides the top three fights on this card and maybe a few others, yeah, I don't know, dude. They could have easily made this a fight night for free. But regardless, we got the light heavyweight title on the line. Valentina Shevchenko is putting her title on the line against Tyler Santos. And a few notable fights from the prelims is Brendan Allen versus Jacob Malkoon and Andre Fialho versus Jake Matthews. Those are going to be some solid fights. First and foremost, we'll just get right into the, the light heavyweight championship between Glover Teixeira and Yuri Prohashka. What do you think about this matchup? And what do you think about the two, con- uh, the champ versus the contender? I love this matchup. It's a phenomenal matchup. I couldn't be more happy as a UFC fan to finally see some really good competition in this uh, weight division. Honestly, it's been lacking the past few years. It hasn't really gone anywhere because of, you know, the John Jones factor, right? Uh, Daniel Cormier, right? So, so it's, it's really nice to see a, a huge mix up in, in the, uh, the weight class here. I'm very excited to see Yuri get his shot at the title. Can we all just give um, our, our man there a round of applause? For what what what, how, what is his age? Glover is what 44, 44 years old? 42 or 43. He's the Tom Brady of, of our of our organization. I mean, the UFC got like let's really just give him praise on being able to top of the you know perform at the top level here at 44 years old. What a phenomenal being that guy is. He has a gym out where he lives, and uh, I believe he lives in the Midwest somewhere. I'm not too sure. I'm not gonna talk on that much, but him just being able to be in the gym constantly, training constantly. Um, it, it shows, it shows his, you know, his, uh, his world of knowledge as well, right? Being able to be patient. Um, what worries me in this fight, what seriously worries me in this fight is one, his chin, and two, he does not do really well with really good strikers. Yuri is young, and that's probably his only downfall. Other than that, the kid is strong, talented. He's, he checks all the boxes here. So well, for me, it's a really, if I'm in Glover's corner, I'm screaming, take down, take down, take down. Let's uh let's dive into Glover a little bit. He knew uh, as the new champ. It's gonna be his first title defense. He just beat the shit out of uh, Jan Blahovich. He's on a six fight win streak, thirty three and seven, eighteen KOs with ten submissions. The dude six two with a seventy six inch reach. Yes, his big problem though is taking on strikers. He does win fifty three percent of his fights by KO and thirty two percent by submissions. But if you go back to the Ale- Alexander Gustafson fight. Gustafson beat the fucking brakes off of him. Now that's well. Let's look at look at let's look at the Rumble Johnson fight. One uppercut was all it took. One yeah. uppercut. So power and technique is and and problems. Yuri throws uppercuts a lot. <laughs> you know, he throws crazy shit. Yuri exactly. Yuri Prohaska on the other hand is on a thirteen fight win streak. He's 28, 3 and one. 25 KOs and two submissions. He wins ninety percent of five KOs. Jesus Christ! Ninety percent of his fights are by way of KO. Seven percent by submission. This guy barely ever goes to the distance. Now, the thing about Yuri Prohaska, if you haven't seen too many of his fights, is this guy's no slouch on the ground. He's very active off of his back, and he has pretty goddamn good jujitsu. Now, Glover's only chance of winning this fight is taking this guy to the ground. And submitting him. He has no chance on the feet in my eyes. And I mean, I'm not knocking Glover. He could catch Prohaska. But the way Prohaska fights, I highly, highly fucking doubt he's going to land a solid punch clean on the chin when a guy like Dominic Reyes, who is way better at striking, had no chance. Now, the thing about Glover, too, is that he only averages 2.11 takedowns per 15 minutes. So, realistically... He, if he grabs Prohaska, he better get him to the fucking ground. Because if he doesn't, Prohaska lands 7.19 significant strikes per minute. <laughs> You're going to be eating yeah. seven significant strikes a minute. They're yeah. five minutes. That's, that's, that means that what that means, if you guys don't know what a significant strike is, it means your head's getting knocked back. Your leg's getting swept from under you. It's a big hit. So, you know, for me, honestly, I, I, this I'm going to cut it to you straight. 
I think Yuri's just too young. I think that Glover has so much going on this. And and listen, I may be wrong, or Glover may be a fool, but if he does not take him down and grind him the way he did Jan, I, I mean, it just proves to me that there's no faith in that guy, right, at this age. I know it's harsh, but that's the reality of a young man's game. Now, I see Glover going in there, doing the same exact thing he did to Jan, to Yuri. Um, but you were fucking but crazy. There's, but there's, <laughs> they call me crazy Chris, man. But there's there's that one chance of Yuri hitting him, right, on the way in. And, but I think, the, again, like the Jan fight, we get into the later rounds. If he can get him off of his game, I think it's a tough fight, man. I think Glover wins it with a, either a decision or he, 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 he probably gasses him out and chokes him out. Like I said, he Glover lands two takedowns per 15 minutes. He's going to have extreme – This look, the athleticism, landslide to Prohoshka, which means he's going to be extremely hard to close the gap on to be able to get in range to even get a takedown. Glover, let's be honest here, he does not like he sets up a double leg and has explosion in. He's no, he needs to grab you, clinch fight you, get drag you to the ground. Yeah, that but, shit but Jan is has not better, happening. We could easily say we could easily say the fight that uh Jan had with Reyes, right? We could easily say he he outstruck him easily, broke his nose, beat him out, right? Right? But then Glover went in there and, and ragdolled him. So that's what I'm saying. I just don't think Yuri has the experience, man. I don't think he's been pushed in those uh, you know areas. I don't think he's been challenged. Oh, I, think I think Glover's Yuri... camp, I think Glover's camp knows exactly what to expect. And here's the problem is Yuri. Yeah, this is his, probably his third fight in the UFC, so people think he doesn't have experience. This guy has a shit ton of experience against really good fighters from Ryzen. I mean, maybe they're not okay. the same level as the UFC, but he has 25 KOs. Okay. This guy has so, a so, lot of experience knocking people the fuck out. So give me a prediction, then. Give me a prediction. Glover is probably going to get knocked out in the third round because I think that he uh, Prohoshka is going to time out. The, the first round is going to be a lot of feeling out. He's going to be avoiding Glover a lot. Glover's not athletic. Listen, when he when he not when he beat Jan Blahovich, Jan is not as athletic as Prohoshka, and Prohoshka would have knocked Jan out too. He would have absolutely won that fight. So whoever wins this fight, I mean, realistically, is probably going to beat Blahovich again. But anyway, third round, I see Prohoshka not a TKO, complete KO. Glover struggles against strikers. He is not athletic at 42 years old. He probably has a decent chin. And, and I'm not taking anything from the guy. The king of Brazil is Charles Oliveira. This guy's about to lose his belt. Yuri said that he's waited until he was prepared to take the title at the UFC to come into the UFC. And he's doing exactly what he said he's going to do. So I have faith in that. I have faith in the young man and the knockouts. So, yeah, fuck that. He's definitely winning. All right. I got, like I said, I, I have uh, Glover, you know, grinding him out or tapping him out, period. What, just tapping him out whenever? Um, I think it's going to be late. I think maybe third, fourth round because, because Glover's style is really to grind it out. So I'm, I'm seeing a third or fourth round submission. And I think that, uh, Jan throws all the, all, I think he throws fucking, you know, I think he throws nothing but haymakers and, and big bombs the entire time until he gasses out and the tank has nothing left. And no matter what, how tough you are mentally, if your body gives out, your I've been there, man. Your body gives out. You're just screwed. You're fucked. That's it. Bro, Yuri, so, is, Yuri is not going to gas out. This is, I swear to God, dude, he's going to knock this guy the fuck out. We, well, we will see. We will see. Yeah, we will see. And if you're a betting person, I would definitely put your money on Prohoshka. Like, right. don't don't risk it on the on some old geezer. This guy's definitely gonna lose. <laughs> He's the champ, man. Come on, give him some respect. Bro, look, yeah. style, styles make matchups, and Blahovich stylistically didn't yeah, no, match up good, against look, Tech I, just, It's not a good matchup. I, I'm just taking the underdog on this one, bro. I don't I'm not I see all of your points and I'm I'm raising it. And I say I think that he just doesn't get the job done because he's too young. He doesn't have the experience that a Glover who's been in those real grueling battles, tough fucking fight camps, all that stuff till 44. You think this guy doesn't love the game? He's here for a reason at 44. Yeah, I think he got his uh I think he won it at the right time. Now just remember being young and inexperienced. This guy's 28 years old, Prohoshka is. John that's Jones. That's still real young, man. That's still real that's, young. That's yeah, young that man. is real young. But John Jones is the one of the most dominant fighters and won the belt at 21 or 22 years old. But we also so, saw a lot of growth from John through the years. It wasn't like we, he just didn't grow. No, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about you're talking about this guy's young. He's not young and he's well experienced. He just people just don't know him because he didn't fight in an American famous organization. So People will know who Prohaska is on, on June 11th. I'll, I'll promise you that. Moving <laughs> on to the to the co-main event, another title fight. Valentina Shevchenko 
the bullet is going to be taking on Tyler Santos. Uh, I'm very curious to see what you think about this fight. Shevchenko's 22 and three, eight KO, seven submissions. Tyler Santos is 19 and one, 10 KOs and three submissions. Both ladies are on nice, nice win streaks. Uh, Shevchenko's on an eight fight win streak. Santos is on a four fight win streak. What do you think about this matchup? Yeah, I think she gets. I think uh, Shevchenko runs absolutely right through her. I don't think Taylor Taylor uh, Santos. Tyler. I don't think she, Tyler. Tyler Santos. No disrespect. Tyler Santos. I don't think she has a fucking chance after watching her last fight against uh, what uh, the the Roxana Roxana. Uh, I thought she just fucked uh, Calderwood or whatever Wood. Whatever. Oh, did she just is. beat Calderwood? Okay, so maybe the last it's, fight. It's just Wood her. now. She's married. <laughs> oh, Wood, Wood, Wood. That's right, right, right. She's married. <laughs> hey, congratulations, uh, Joanna. Um, yeah, no, uh, I think she gets absolutely obliterated, man. I don't think she, I don't think she stands a chance. Shevchenko's jujitsu is so underrated and her fucking kicks are so underrated. Like it's scary. I don't, she's won her last fight. If uh, last three fights, if I'm not mistaken by TKO KO and finished everybody. And, um, you know, I don't think Santos comes with the complete package to, to handle any of that. I just don't think she has a stand, stands a chance. And I'm not trying to disrespect her because I can definitely say that she's definitely a top fighter, but there's levels to this. And, and well, Shevchenko is, is fucking high up there, man. Shevchenko she's, she's, is, is, besides Amanda Nunez and Juliana Pena, uh, Shevchenko is probably one of the scariest women's fighters of all time. I mean, she's the most well-rounded. Eight yeah, kilos and seven, and seven submissions. That means that she does it on the ground and standing up. And here's the thing about Santos. The, the, my big question is, because she's a big girl, she's 5'6", 68-inch 68, 68 reach. She's going to have a reach advantage in this fight, not by much. But can she keep Shevchenko on the outside and try to pick her apart? I mean, she's 19-1. and one. The girl is really, really good at winning. But since entering the UFC, she has not had a finish in the UFC. All of her yeah. fights have gone to decision. So my question No, she she finished wood she finished wood with the arm bar or something. Oh, okay. She she got a submission in. She got right, a submission. That's, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And it was in the to be honest to, and to be fair, she beat Joanna pretty badly and then got on the ground and finished her. So I, yeah, that was well, a good fight. Besides that fight, her other four fights in the UFC, she she's really only See, what gone I'm to decision. Of, what I'm what I'm scared of for her to be honest with you is watching her fight Roxana, man. Cuz Roxana's a grinder, she's a tough fight. But if you cannot go out there and beat down Roxana and, and make it convincing, like, because some of us, including myself, think that Roxana maybe have gotten robbed of that decision. You don't stand, in my eyes, you don't stand a fucking chance. Well, here's Not the thing. Is Shevchenko, Shevchenko has has beaten people who I think are actually really good contenders. Like, Jessica Andrade. Uh, yeah. She's an animal, dude. She's a very. Dude, that girl's a, a fucking beast. She, she's isn't problem. that the one that uh, she knocked out Rose, right? With yeah, the, she dumped Rose on her head. I mean, Rose, yeah. I mean, well, she became she, the champ. She got the KO. Out Rose. I mean, that was a tough fight for her, but regardless, my point is she she beats really good people and not only beats them, she finishes them. Now, Tyler Santos, she has some UFC experience, but getting thrown into a title fight against somebody like Chef Shanko, who has so much experience at finishing fights, I just I don't I have a hard time picturing that girl picking apart Valentina. Look. Or yeah, going that's, for that's a takedown. Shevchenko is talking like, about moving up in weight class and going against Nunez or Pena again. So let's let's let's, let's look at let's look at the big picture, right? She's wiped out the weight class multiple times. The last person I really thought that stood a chance was Ch Chattanooga. Is that Ch uh, Chukagan? Uh, yeah, I don't know how to. I don't know. Her how name's Ch Chukagan. Kaylin Chukagan. Chuk Chukagan. Yeah, I, that's the last girl. Tall, lanky, good kickboxing swallowed up man swallowed up it's not and on the same just, level as a sh a sh that's what i'm saying it's not it's near just, the same it's level just, it, it, it's, santos is not there man she's not there she's not gonna win and here's the thing bro like look at <laughs> look at what's going on in the bigger picture all right juliana uliana pena however you say it juliana pena beat amanda nunez whether people think it's a fool it doesn't matter it fucking happened and shevchenko beat pena and i, I think she finished her not even just beat her so be, to be going against those kind of girls constantly, and she's never had an easy fight in her last like twelve fights. Uh, uh, let's see, I don't have the exact amount yeah, of title. Yeah, I, I saw her. I saw her. Uh, uh, the picture of you standing next to her. She's not a small girl, man. That girl got some fucking muscle mass. She's in heels, but yes, she's not a small girl, and she's no, fucking, no, no. I'm saying I'm not. No, no, no I know, I'm I know. Like, <laughs> muscle wise, like no, she's she's jacked. She's a big. For people that don't. 
people that don't know, Mad Maddie went to college to play football. Mad Maddie was a big yo dude. And and that girl stood next to him with some some biceps, bro. Like she's not yeah. a small girl. That girl is big. Yeah, I've had the I forgot about that. I've had the pleasure of actually meeting Valentina Shevchenko, and she is fucking intimidating. She yeah, looks she's like, huge. She looks like a UFC champion, bro. She looks like she could get in there with the flyweights in the men's division and probably fuck some of them up. I look, I stood next to her, and no offense, Joseph Benavides, and I was terrified of Shevchenko. I mean, I was turned on and terrified. Don't flag me, YouTube. I was like, God damn, this girl is beautiful and also scary as fuck because I know what she can do. And then I yeah. said, the Benavides is like, damn, you're a little ass dude, bro. She could probably fuck you up. I'm, I'm just talking shit here. All right. But regardless, like Valentina Shevchenko takes on. Look, here's here's the thing. Right. Tyler. Hey, Santos, shout out to JB on his retirement, by the way. Joe, Joe's been around a long time. Congratulations on your retirement. Brother. Yeah, I like I like I like watching you fight. I was just fucking with you. But look, Santos reminds me of like a Holly Holm. Like, you know what I mean? Like a taller you know, link your like long person mm -hmm. and Holly Holmes, but not as skilled. Fucking... Holly Holmes, even better. You know what I mean? Like I'm Holly Holmes. I'm pretty sure Shevchenko fought her and beat her. Holly Holm fought Shevchenko and lost the decision. If she... if Holly Holm, who I think is a way better striker than Tyler, Tyler Santos is can't get the job done. I don't see Santos winning this fight. 19 and one is going to turn to 19 and two and Shevchenko is going to be yeah. moving right up a weight class. Look, the thing about, look, the thing about good records outside of the UFC is it's outside of the UFC. That's what gets you in the door. Once you're in the door, look at Justin Gaethje. I mean, I, I look, Michael Chandler, I, these guys are huge top contenders, big names, tough as nails, and they lose fights, man. I don't think, let's just be honest. I think I'm going to call it as it is Shevchenko round one TKO KO. I think round two, she's going to knock out Santos. I mean, I, I, I've i watched Santos fight. This one I've, might be scary, man. This might be an actual, like, like the last time where you, uh, Jessica I got put put away and was nasty. It might be one of those ones again, dude. I, I see that happening. But I also think what would make it very interesting is if Santos comes out, and this isn't going to be easy, but if she grinds Shevchenko hard wrestling the whole time, that's her. That would probably be the best chance of winning. And that's not even a good chance because Shevchenko is so fucking dangerous on the ground too. But that would be a lot better than just standing and banging with somebody like Shevchenko who will guarantee pick her apart. Yeah. yeah the difference I've... the difference between Shevchenko and Amanda Nunez in these title fights is that Amanda Nunez got baited into a firefight and gassed out. And I don't think Shevchenko is going to get baited in if she's getting caught. She's going to, she's going to, Make the adjustments, and she's gonna turn it on. Like, like I've seen her do time and time again. So at the end of the day, round two, Kate, clean KO. That's what I think is gonna happen. I think round, KO, round, yeah, Shevchenko. And then the last big fight that we want to go into is number two Zhang Weili in the rematch against Joanna uh, Joanna uh, Yeah, sorry, I don't I don't know how to say her fucking name. Joanna Janjacek. There you go. I mean, I'm probably gonna keep butchering that, but regardless. <laughs> Uh, it's a rematch from March 7, 2020, where Wei Li won by split decision. And that was a that was a fight of the year candidate, if I'm not mistaken. It was a really good fight. And in that fight, Wei Li turned Yuana's head into a fucking balloon. She beat the forehead in. I mean, it was back and forth. It was a split decision. And Yuana was... Yeah, Wei Li definitely did the more damage. And I think that's probably what leaned the judges towards her. But at the end of the day... Uh, Whaley is 21 and 3, 10 KOs, 7 submissions. Joanna's uh, 16 and 4, 4 KOs and 1 submission. But Joanna was one of the most dangerous champs at one point before that fight took place. Now, Whaley has lost two times in a row to Rose Nama Nunez, won by a fucking head sleeper kick the second time by, I think it was a split decision as well. Uh, no, it was just a decision. Unanimous? I, I think it was. I'm pretty sure she knows. Regardless, she lost twice. Uh, her last two fights are L's to Nama Nunez. Now, this fight is pretty interesting. If I'm not mistaken, isn't Joanna Jacek's last two losses to Rose as well? Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, she lost to Wei Li and to Rose. And to Rose, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, she got knocked out the first time by Rose, and then I think, I don't remember. She got TKO'd by Rose the first time, lost the decision to Rose, which, which arguably could have went her way. And then uh, she uh, lost to Whaley pretty convincingly. Now, the but that was decision. It's weird how judges look at these fights. I'm not sure. Yeah, the, I mean, I, I don't know. The, the Whaley fight, I was going for Rose Nama Nunez in that second fight. And I thought Whaley won. So I don't know how Nama Nunez, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's a whole other story for a whole other time. But Joanna's been on a little bit of a hiatus from the UFC. So this is her return fight. 
She got taken out of Tough the fight. Uh, what? Tough fight to come back to, man. I don't know, man. It depends how hard she's been training. Like Joanna, if you think about Joanna taking time away from the sport, might have been a good thing for her. She gets to no. I'm not saying anything negative. I, I agree with you on that, but I'm just saying like Wei Li's lost uh, and she's hungry, you know, and 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 she's already beaten you, so she's gonna she's gonna try to bring that fire again. Well, here's the thing: is some of these fighters who are really good, they do weird things. Like like Wei Li was a really good striker who had good you know grappling, but now she's trying to grapple too much, I think. And if she goes to do that against Ioana, I don't know what ioana has been up to, but what I do remember is she has those fucking hands. And if she's trying to grapple with Ioana and Ioana keeps her off, she's going to get fucked up in this fight. So yeah. honestly, you know, I love Ioana. I'm, I'm taking her in this fight because I think when you get, when, when you've been fighting for so long and you get time away from the sport, it clears your mind up. It refocuses you. It makes you love what you're doing again. And you get to heal your body more than anything. So I don't know how hard she's been training, but I assume being a former champion that she is going to come in ready to go. Wei Li, I was just not impressed with how she fought Rose the second time. It was a close fight, but you, it wasn't a, I didn't like her game plan in that fight. Maybe yeah. she was scared of getting knocked out, but I was not impressed by that. So I got Ioana winning this fight. All right. Um, I'm going to take Wei Li. I think being active, having tough competition, and, and, and you know, Ioana taking such a time off, I think it plays her into her advantage, especially she moved her camps to uh, train with Cejudo. So, you know, her cardio is going to be there. You know, certain wrestling aspects are going to be there. Um, so I'm going to take Wei Li. I think Wei Li wins another decision. I think it goes five. I think it's a tough fight, war, five rounds. I think Wei Li comes to fight. I just don't think that she's on the same level. Um, and, and just and purely just because she took some time off. I don't think that she's skill-wise she's going to be behind much. I think her tone and her steps and just not having that five-round war, I think that's what's going to throw her off. Yeah, the one thing I do think Wei Li could have a good chance doing is wrestling. I think she she's going she's been shooting for a lot of takedowns, trying to turn into ground fights and go for ground and pound. So she does that against Joanna, and Joanna's not ready for that. But Joanna does train with Kobe Covington and Dustin Poirier and all these other guys. So I think she's going to be well ready to take on Wei Li. That's 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 going to be probably one of the more action packed fights on this fight card. And guys, don't miss the prelim. If you haven't seen Andre Fialho uh, fight, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. He's taking on Jake Matthews. This guy's been asking for a fight after every win that he's had. He lost to uh, Michelle Pereira, but he's coming in and he's trying to get to the top. I fucking respect this guy. I love yeah. this guy. And he has heavy ass hands. So that's on the prelims. We appreciate our fellow Portuguese guys, bro. This guy comes from Portugal. Not many, too, you know, not too much fighters come from that side of the world. And, you know, especially that Spain Portuguese area. So we're very happy to see not only just <clears throat> somebody come from there, but but such a Billy badass. Dude wants to fight after every fight. Even after he loses, you know, he's like, I want to get right back in there. That's what you want to see out of these guys. That so, makes me a fan favorite right away. Like, I like the guy as soon as I saw him. And I was like, you know, one, yeah, got to represent our fellow Portuguese people. And two, the motherfucker has knockout power. I mean, he's getting more and more comfortable. He said he uh, feels... Why, why would I not want to fight? That's where I get, that's where the experience comes from. I just want to keep, keep this shit rolling. And that's how most fighters need to start, get that uh, Kevin Holland mentality and keep that shit pushing. But uh, once again, guys, thanks for uh, checking out our video. Hit us with a like, hit us with a subscribe. Let us know in the comments who you guys think is going to win. I'm telling you, man, UFC 275. I don't know about the rest of the card, but the top three for sure. Those are going to be some bangers. June 11th, Saturday, don't miss it. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Just talking shit, yeah, they bread stank Walk up in the club, dripping like I'm fresh paint I can see through the facade like an